Hello and welcome to another episode of We're Local TV. My name is Tim Fondrick and I'm your host and I'm here with Chris Cummings from Petra Technologies. And uh, Chris, welcome to the show today. Hey, hi. So, you know, things are changing rapidly and it's been kind of a whirlwind of activity as businesses everywhere kind of shift to a remote working model and you are in the thick of it, right? So you are in the IT business Yep. And I wanted to bring you on, and I thought this was an awesome opportunity to kind of share with, with uh, people kind of what are some of the key things that people should be thinking about right now and implementing and tools, uh, you know, as we shift, uh, you know, to this work from home or work remotely uh, environment. So thanks for coming on, and, and why, don't, why don't you just start kind of telling us some, some wisdom here. Sure. Well, thanks. Um, One of the things that I can't stress enough is security of the network connections. And uh, when people are doing work remote, uh, sometimes they're not taking all of the precautions, and especially in there's a crisis mode, some of the uh, firewalls are down. And I'm not even talking about the physical firewalls that we use in our business. It's just the the common sense kind of stuff uh, sometimes gets forgotten. And so we want to foremost tell people, hey, watch out what you're clicking on when you're working remote. If you have access to internal systems, uh, hopefully they're done in a secure manner. And we've been helping a a number of people recently with getting remote connections via a secure connection. And uh, the other part is is that uh, just from email standpoint, uh, there's going to be and we're starting to see a little bit of bump in it right now where there's emails coming out that actually have some pretty cool catchphrases about getting you to tune into this website or this website about maybe with a COVID situation that's going on. And they're not all good links. They're going to bad servers with bad intentions to hijack your machine and potentially put some ransomware on your machine that you're working on remotely because that's where you're viewing your email from. And so even if you're getting into an internal machine remotely with a remote desktop, then you could still be putting your internal systems at risk if you're clicking on those two. So just still take those two things into consideration when you're working remote. So, yeah, I mean, it's so vigilance, right? I mean, really being vigilant now, uh, you know, because we're all kind of tuned in, right, to everything that's going on. Um, I mean, as far as like, how do you spot some of those emails that are that are coming out? What do you look for? Well, the typical things of whether or not they've been formatted correctly, if they got mistypes in them, um, punctuations out of line, um, you got some other little indicators in there that it came from this place, but then it's got a link to another place. Those are the typical spam type uh, indicators that people are aware of. You just got to keep with that same vigilance that you're used to, knowing that even with the new messaging that's going out, those are going to be infectious as well. Yeah. No. So, you know, extra vigilance. I mean, we always want to be vigilant, right? When we're, when we're opening our emails and looking for those types of things, what are some of the things that, that you're seeing? Um, like, have you seen any specific examples of kind of, um, you know, emails that are going around or any, any specific scams that we need to be aware of that are hitting, you know, on the technology side? We haven't seen any up, tick in any specific scam. Uh, nothing's risen to the top. It's just a bunch of munitions that's going out there right now. Right. So it's not any one thing. And uh, the things that are going to impact people is when there's a link that says, hey, go look at this graphic or the statistics of what's currently going on. And people are going to be drawn to statistics. And when you go click on that, it could be going to a malware site and not to a site that's going to give you really good uh, statistics. And those, even though they might be a secure site with the padlock up in the corner, which even the hackers do this nowadays, it's going to be a site that could potentially infect your machine because you've gone there, you've asked for that information, and there could be some document that they make available for free, which could be a Word document or a PDF document that you would even download through the website 
put it on your machine and that could be infectious. Those are some different types of examples. Right. Well, and, and I'm, again, like I kind of opened initially, you guys are in the thick of this, right? So, uh, what, um, as you're helping your customers, I'd love to kind of just kind of hear like, what are you guys doing to come alongside your customers right now? We're giving them a phone call. We're reaching out and making sure, number one, that they're able to do work work remote as much as possible. We have some people that actually are in the education business or they're in a uh, law business or a CPA business. And in those cases, uh, some have a combination of uh, systems that need to have access to their own internal office. So like there's a file server there and they still need to have access to those. Or there's some actually that are utilizing cloud services like a CRM application that is already cloud hosted. Their Google Drive is already cloud hosted. And those guys are able to work pretty seamless already being remote. But now you have the whole cultural shift. I'm used to going down the hall and I'm talking to somebody to get a check signed if I need to go walk out with a check. Uh, So now there's the inner office communications that's a little bit different. And people are saying, well, how do I communicate with somebody down the hall that used to be physically down the hall? Right. (laughs) So there's the Microsoft Teams, there's the Slack, there's other tools out there that can kind of keep people into that chat mode and use those tools. But then again, it's a new tool. So now I got to learn how, how is it appropriate to use it? How often can I interrupt you? Um, Because now it's right there at my keyboard. And so do, do I get to ask you a question every five minutes or should I be asking when it's appropriate to pick up the phone? There's all this stuff that's coming into play now for people who aren't used to working remotely. And so we've actually had a number of our people work remote many times. And so we're kind of used to this in and out of the office. And uh, one of the tips that I tell people is just be mindful of their schedules Give them a little prompt that says, hey, I need to chat. I need to have a little bit of your time, maybe 15 minutes, 30 minutes. And can we get on to a uh, Teams meeting or a Zoom meeting and talk about this? Or can we just pick it up over the phone? And just kind of using some of the quick communications to let them know what the bigger communication need is. And that's been really helpful, too. Yeah, I like that. We've actually recently uh, kind of implemented uh, some team meeting rhythm um, that can help identify like what we're looking for in terms of time. So like we, we've kind of defined it in our office uh, and now remote offices uh, or, you know, remote working. But basically like, you know, if we're talking about a, a five minute type deal, I need five minutes of your time, you know, we'll say, well, we need a huddle. Right. Mm -hmm. And then if we need about 30 to 45 minutes, we'll say, well, we just need a, you know, we need a brief. Uh, Mm -hmm. And then, you know, then longer ones we've got different names for. But that that has helped tremendously, actually, just to kind of give this expectation. uh, And then what we're trying to shoot for. We don't always make it, but it it gives them the the, the big obviously is to have the repetitive ones already scheduled. And okay, can this wait for our weekly Tuesday meeting and put it on the agenda for a Tuesday meeting? And for the things that can't wait that long, obviously, we're talking about the interrupted type, the mechanisms that we're talking about. Right. Yeah. Uh, so, are, do you guys are you guys using and helping your customers? Uh, so, I mean, in terms of like teamwork, I mean, not teamwork. Uh, Microsoft Teams, sorry, that's another tool we use is teamwork. But uh, Microsoft Teams, I mean, do you kind of have a favorite uh, platform that you're helping people with right now? Or what does that look like? We're very much integrated with Office 365 ourselves. And so we've been utilizing Teams. Um, Slack is another one that we've had even prior to using Teams. And so that's the one that's uh, predominantly used for the chatter that goes on throughout the week. And so it's pretty easy to set that up into channels. Both of them can have channels. And so if you have a company that's big enough and you want to kind of keep some of the chatter down to a minimum, you can actually have channels that are departmental. So you can have uh, maybe a shipping channel or a administrative channel uh, so that people aren't having to watch everything flying by. Of course, you can be a member of multiple channels and you can have certain channels that actually can bleep you and certain channels that are just quiet until you go take a look. 
Right. Yeah, we, we use Slack quite a bit and, and we've got different channels um, and uh, we just find that, you know, really helpful for that group communication uh, and, and then segmented communication as, as we need it. So, right. Cool. And well, eventually you might even see that blow up to the point to where, hey, hey time out, time out. It's a huddle. Yeah. It, it, it's a meeting. Yeah. Um, and we need to loop some other people in here that aren't able to talk fast enough because guess what? They're working. Right. <laughs> Amazing. <laughs> yeah, indeed. So uh, any, what are the things that you, would you share during this time? I mean, you guys are, you know, again, you're a well-established uh, IT company, security, vigilance, just, you know, tools, anything else you'd like to share? Yeah, I'm, there's a lot of, um, businesses obviously that are local that um, retail for example you just can't do the work from home you know uh, so you know I think um, what we can do to help out our partners in the local community is huge as well and um, things that uh, for us uh, that we can help in other ways that may not be IT but what is it uh, for the customer uh, but who they're servicing as well and how is it that we could be thinking about ways to help our clients help their customers? So um, there's probably um, quite a bit of people that are in our customer base right now that are still going going strong. And um, it's because some of these things have already been in place and ready to go. Um, for voice over IP, that's probably the biggest hurdle that people are trying to deal with right now, um, excuse me, lack of uh, voice over IP solutions. So if you have a traditional phone system in your office, you can no doubt forward the phone call, but then you have to decide, okay, all the phone calls now that come in have to go to Betty, she has messages, and now she's actually using Slack or email to get the message out to Bob so that Bob can return the phone call. Right. Um, it is a little bit of a complication. Uh, obviously, it's doable in this short period of time. Uh, but if somebody doesn't have voice over IP's phone solutions currently, they may want to be looking at it pretty soon. Um, obviously, it's not something that can be turned on tomorrow. It requires a bit of planning and uh, signing up for the service, et cetera, et cetera. Um, but uh, I don't see this going away uh, as far as the technology. People are going to be forced to use the technology now because of the uh, restrictions that we have in place. But then this money that has been invested is going to be able to be utilized into the future for many other reasons. Uh, my kids are sick and I gotta stay home or I'm not feeling so good and I could potentially uh, pass a cold to somebody in the office or I'm out of town for a couple of days and I need to do work remotely under those circumstances to where the technology that we're being pushed into is actually going to be utilized into the future. Yeah, I think that's a really good point because, uh, you know, I think what we're seeing is, yes, we're all kind of being forced at the moment, but, you know, as I talk to a lot of, you know, our customers and our people, you know, colleagues in our industry, et cetera, I mean, I think we're seeing, you know, kind of a fundamental uh, opportunity and shift to get these things in place and that's probably not going to change. Like, so, I mean, you think about how many people have used Zoom for the first time, you know, oh, yeah. in the last two weeks or maybe have signed up for Slack or Teams or, you know, whatever and, and, I just, right. I think we're, I think we're seeing some fundamental shifts, um, that, uh, you know, will come out of this that will probably stick around, uh, you know, for sure. Yeah. Yep. Great. Well, if you were to, um, I always like, kind of like to ask this question, um, you know, if, if somebody wanted to get a hold of you, uh, you know, how, how would be the, uh, how would be the best way to do that? And what are, what are, again, maybe two or three things that, that, maybe you could help them with right now? Well, the easiest thing to do is to call our phone number. It's 503-363-2693. We're still manning the phones uh, on normal business hours, and we still are fully operational with people that are eager and willing to help. 
Uh, our website, petrotechit.com, is another place to find out some additional information about us and actually fill out a form if you're interested there, too. Uh, some of the things that we can be helping people with right away is to get their teams working if they already have Office 365, get their Slack up and running if they haven't been using that. Um, we could actually get some remote uh, desktop services into place with a little bit of time and planning. Uh, again, we want to not jump into something that opens a big gaping hole into somebody's network. And so some of these things that we would do for remote workers um, would be through a secure access technology and not just jumping into something willy-nilly and say, oh, that's free, let's spin that up right away. Um, I'm in fear right now that there are a number of people that are downloading something that is free just to get remote access to their uh, network so that they can do work. And if that's not done correctly, then they're actually putting their network in jeopardy of malware and ransomware, in which case the cost of actually recovering from that is gonna be greater than waiting for the appropriate remote access to be put into place. Right. No, really good, really good points. And, uh, you know, so I think if you, you know, if anybody has a need, you know, reach out to Chris and his team, they do a great job. Um, and, um, you know, I, I, just real quick, can you share kind of what Petra, uh, the, the origin story of, of your name? Oh, sure. Well, uh, Mark Hicks and I, we got together about a, a couple years ago now. And um, so Hicks Technology services uh, here in town, a company of about 34 years old, and TTJ Netcom, a company of about 39 years old, uh, had a lot of similarities in delivering the services for uh, companies that are about 20 to 30 users in size that have a professional office and need some IT services that uh, with the managed services, you don't have to have an on-site IT person. And uh, we can usually offer those services much more cost effective by having it outsourced than having an internal person that you pay full time for. And because of those uh, models were fairly similar, we thought we could actually put two companies together and uh, with the economies of scale actually uh, bring some new services to the table and ramp up some specialties in house that we couldn't do as two separate companies. And so in 2019, then we formed a new company name as a result of our two companies coming together. And that company uh, became Petra Technologies and we provide rock solid IT. That's awesome. Well, Chris Cummings, thanks so much, uh, Petra Technologies, uh, for uh, joining me today. We're going to get this out and get the word out and uh, appreciate it. Any, any closing nuggets for us? Uh, the little rocks, so to speak. Um, the um, thing is, is just uh, be cautious, uh, work remotely responsibly, I guess. Um, right now is just also stay in contact with your colleagues at the office. Um, you know, even though you're not there in person, still reach out throughout the phone and reach out through video uh, frequently. Uh, we as human beings are still uh, needing some of this interaction that normally happens inside the office. Now we have to come up with new ways to do it remotely. And um, so for me personally, I like being out and about. So being cooped up in home, maybe cooped is a little bit of a harsh word, but being <laughs> at home for so long right. um, is uh, a little bit difficult. So um, <clears throat> I'll have to admit, I still visit my local um, tap house down the street just to see how things are going down the street too. And I think we need to still, still stay in touch with people and uh, not lose track of our, our community. Uh, I think wise words. And uh, like I've been saying pretty much, uh, you know, for, for every, every chance, I guess, you know, we're, we're in this together. Uh, we're better together and together we'll get through this. So yes, definitely. Uh, let's stay in touch and thanks, Chris. I appreciate it and have a great day. Thank you.